Hi, this is Cindy. Welcome to my channel and to my third attempt at making this video. Uh, this project is actually very easy, but for some reason I am having some issues with my video. So hopefully this time will be the charm. Today we are making these really cute little pockets, envelopes. What do you want to call them? We have lots of different options. I have many made because, like I said, I've done this a couple of times. What happened was I made these a while ago, a couple months, and I have been putting one in almost every one of my journals, and I realized I only had this one left. So I thought I really need to make a few more. So I started making a few, and then I thought, well, I should turn on my camera. So I have turned on the camera now a couple of times in an attempt to do this. So we're going to take a look at how to make these absolutely wonderful pocket pieces and we're going to look at several different types of closures which you have seen here as I'm leafing through them. And all you need, if you are going to craft with me, you need six by six papers. I have a whole stack of them. Oh my glory, I have so many, and this is not even all of them, but I have so many six by six papers. And for the ones that I have already taken out, because we're going to make this, actually we're going to make this four times. I took these from Everyday Papers, American Crafts. Uh, that was this one. And uh, I don't remember which, no, it wasn't that one. It was just this first one, I guess, came from there. Bella and Bloom. This is uh, DCWV. This is double-sided, and that's these two pieces, and we're going to take a look at what to do with double-sided pieces. These are single-sided pieces. We're going to do something with those. And then I have a 12 by 12. So gather up a bunch of your 6 by 6s I will wait for you. You go right ahead. All you got to do is pause the video and go get your 6 by 6s and then come on back. You're going to need 6 by 6s and you're going to need glue. And really, that's all you absolutely positively need. If you want, you can grab a couple of little rounds, but we're going to talk about those in a bit. So, I'll wait for you. You go get your stuff and come on back. And if you don't have the 6x6s, six grab a 12x12, 12 because 12, we're going to talk about how to do with one of these as well. Okay, three, two, one. I hope you're back because we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with these two pieces because I am doing a black and white journal at some point and I really want to be able to put one of these in it. So in order to start, you simply take one of your pieces and you fold it in half. Easy peasy. Just fold it in half. And you take your other 6x6 six six and you slide it inside. And one of the things that you're going to discover as we go through this is that all 6 by 6s are not measured the same. When you are using these from different places, they sometimes are different. I'm going to fold it over about 2 inches. So it looks like that on the back and this on the front. And that's it. That's all the folding that you have to do. And the gluing is particularly easy. We're going to open it up. And you're going to put glue along the one side on here. Just a thin line of glue. So you can use art glitter glue, you can use Fabri-Tec. I'm using Fabri-Tec. I don't recommend using a glue stick unless you can get a real thin line on that glue stick. All right, and then make sure you are lined up and you are level. And you want to make it so that you have just a tiny bit of space. I have maybe a 32nd of a space there. But you want it the same all the way along. And then you're just going to close it up. Wasn't that easy? Flip it over and you're going to do the same thing. We're going to put a line of glue right here. And a line of glue right here. And my Fabri-Tac is getting a little... It keeps leaving me an extra line. And I'm going to glue it up. And now it's done. That's it. That's it. That's how easy it was. Now, I missed over here, and I've got a little bit of a line. If that bothers you and you don't like it, if, because things, like I said, all six by sixes are not made equal, you can very easily go take it to your trimmer, 
trim it off so that now it is where you want it to be. I'm not going to do closure on this for, because I'm going to do closures in a bit. We're going to start by just making a bunch of these. So we've got this one, which is a, a six by six, but this is not perforated. That's a part of it. So I have to cut that off. And this is where I say those six by sixes are not always equal. I put it to the six by six line and cut. And when I do my piece together, now I want this again. I have a tendency, if I'm working with a solid and a print, I tend to like my print out here so that it's, so you see most of it. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to fold my printed one in half. And I just give it a good crease. And then this is white on one side and it is uh, colored on the other side. So I want the color side out. I told you these six by sixes are not created equal. I'm gonna bend it over. What you wanna make sure you're doing when you turn it over is that you're giving yourself enough space here to be able to put something in it. Okay, let's go ahead and glue it up. So I'm gonna glue right here. Just trailing my glue because I've got a mess on my glue thing. I'll fix it in a minute. There we go. So I'm making a bit of a mess of this one, but that's this piece side. There we go. And then I glue it together, flip it over, and I glue it again. One, two. And fold it over. Now again, I ended up with that little bit of extra. Hang on, I've got glue on me. I'm going to clean the top of my Fabri-Tac real quick because it has made a mess. So let me close that up while I work here because I want to do something else with this one as well. So let me go ahead and trim this one up. And like I said, the trim, you that may not bother you. And if it doesn't bother you, then don't worry about it. I'm taking mine off so they're level. But if yours, if it doesn't bother you, don't worry about it. What the next thing I'm going to do is take my corner rounder and I'm going to round the corners on the front of this one. Do I want to do that? No, I don't want to do that. You know what I want to do? I want to make a notch. I'm going to come to the center and make a notch. Just like that. Now I could also make a notch in here if I wanted to. Probably would have been easier to do that before I put it down. But I like that just the way it is. All right. Again, we'll worry about more closures in a little bit. Now these two are, came from the same pack. They both have, they're both two-sided. And I'm going to cut them, cut those pieces off right at the top. So these will both definitely be six inches. And this should avoid having to do anything else with it. Now those are nice pieces. You know I'm going to keep those for my scrap box. They'll go into a cluster somewhere along the line. All right, now I have some decisions to make. Which one do I want? Hmm? This is one of the problems I have with two-sided paper is I want, I want them both. Okay, I think for this one I'm going to put the butterflies on the outside. No. So my butterflies are going to go here. And when I put this in, I'm going to fold it so that this comes down as my flat. Now this one I don't need to trim because I got it right the first time. So it's going to look like that on the other side. But this time I do want to use my corner rounder and I am going to corner these outside edges real quick. And I'm going to corner my uh, inside of my, my flap. Okay. Now, remember, the piece that's half, and let me do this to it, 
because this is a little bit thicker paper than some of the other stuff. The piece that's half, this is going to go slide into the piece that's half. Okay, so it's going to look like that. So when you open it up, do I have that half? Yeah. When you open it up, it's going to look like that. Now this one, nope, you know what it is? I cornered, I, I did it right, I just cornered it. I want the corners to be on the outside, not on the inside. I'm like, what? Why is it not looking right? Okay, so this is how it's going to go. All right, so I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put my line of Fabri Tac along here and my fine line of Fabri Tac along here. See how easy these are? These are fast and quick, these do not take a lot of time. I'm going to flip it over. Now this time when I put my Fabri-Tac up, I have to be careful because I don't want to go over my corner, the, cor the rounded corner. So I'm only going to go up to the tip of the rounded corner and to the tip there and put it together. Now it looks like this. Isn't that great? Okay, we're still not doing... We're going to do all of the closures all at once. What we're going to do, I will put down into the description box the, um, what, the what do you call them, the timestamps. There it is. There's the word. Now, if you have a 12 by 12, now this is a 12 by 12 that I will probably never use. It's really pretty, but it is too big for anything that I'm ever going to do. So I'm going to cut this down to a 6 by 6. And you can do this really with any of the, if you don't have 6x6 paper pads and you have a lot of 12x12s, just take some of your 12x12s and cut them down because now you've got 6x6s. Now what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to take one and fold it under, just like you, we did before, fold it in half, done. And this time when I take the next one, and I put it in, actually I want to put it in this way. And I fold it down. And again, I don't want to fold it down too far because I want to make sure I've got enough room in here. Now I have this, okay? And then I could do the same with this one. Actually, you know what? Hang on. I want to try something. I'm going to do this. And do I like that any better? It's, no, it's not. I really don't like that any better. I like that. So this is just another way of using up your extras. Um, I can put it in. I can put that so it's in. And so the solid comes out. Maybe I'll do that, just to have something different, so they're not all the same. So now we have this with this on the back. And then when you decorate it and you do different things with it, you're going to come up with different ways of looking at it. Now, so you can do it with a 12 by 12, you can do it with others. All right, let's talk about closures. This one, I don't think I want to put a closure on. I want to leave it just the way it is. When I stuff it, I can just uh, decorate it and then stuff it into something so this one's not getting a closure that one's easy this one is going to get a very simple closure and for that I have some already pre-cut rounds I have a this is a three-quarter inch punch round punch I also have a one and a half inch punch but the one and a half is too big for this so I'm just clearing these things off my desk and I have a whole bunch of these. Whenever I have extra paper and I just don't know what to do with it, I just make holes out, make holes, make circles out of it, throw them in here, and then they're ready when I want to use this. And this is a pretty thick piece. That's the wrong piece. That's why. That's too thick. There we go. That's the one I want. It's a real pretty green for this. And all you need to do, this is the simplest closure ever. You take your round, you put a little bit of glue on the very bottom, 
and my glue is oozing on me. And you put it so that it just touches. I'm going to let that dry. I'm not going to do anything with it. But what's going to happen is that you end up with this. And then to close it, you just close it. Okay, that's still drying, so I'm not gonna not gonna play too much with that till it dries. This one I made thicker. Um, I took several layers of black and I put them all together to put it on here because I'm not actually going to do that kind of a piece. I'm going to do this type of a closure. So I have from Stampin' Up these round and square brads, although to be honest, most of them are square. I thought I would have, the round ones are tiny. I mean, tiny, tiny. Let's see if I can get one of the round ones out. The round ones are very, very small. And then those are the square ones. So I got these from Stampin' Up. If I can find the link, I'll put it down below. Um, we'll see how that goes. And the other thing I need is my needle. Let me grab my needle out here. And my glue book, because I want something to punch into with my needle. And I'm going to make a hole right in the middle with my needle. Now I could also do this. Hang on. Where's my awl? There it is. With an awl. And I might do that this time because I've got a lot there. So I can push push through with my awl just a little bit just to make a little bit of a hole. Not making a very big hole. I got a lot of layers here. Probably shouldn't have used quite so many layers. There we go. We'll go through with my needle. That makes it nice and big. What I also need to do is make a hole here. So my everything's all the same color. I'm going to make a little bit of a hole there. That doesn't take much to make that hole. Then I take my brad and I put my brad through. I found this was easier when I did this the last time to put my brad through my circle first and punch it through there. See, now I've got it there. And then put my bread through my hole. There. Open up the bread. Now I probably could put something here, but I'm, I don't think I will. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. So there's the first part. Now I have this hemp cord that I got from I'm going to say the Dollar Tree. It was not expensive. It was, it's four things of hemp cord. I mean, there's not a lot. It doesn't, it's 21 feet each, which is plenty for what I'm doing. If I can find the start to it. There it is. At least I hope it is. There. All right. I'm going to unwind a bunch of it. And what I think I want is one, two, three, and a little bit, just to be on the safe side. Because I, I would rather have too much than not enough. So the first thing I'm going to do is come around. I'm putting my short end on the right for a reason, because it's right over left and under. Now you're going to see just how I am at tying knots, which is clumsy. And then left over right and under makes for a square knot. And that's all I need. Now I'm going to cut off my extra piece of string. And then I can go one, two, and come around. Now I have a closure. Isn't that great? 
So I have this type of closure, which is, come on, there we go. Got this type of closure, this type of closure, and then I use the notch rather than put a closure in. So three different ways of closing this up. Easy. This is so easy. I do want to talk for a moment about size. These are six by six papers. You can do it with other sizes. I made one before that I put in my idea book that is four by four. This one, I just put a simple closure on. And again, I'm just looking for something I can slide into here. You know, slide in, slide in, easy. So I put this into my idea book, one, to remind me that I can put a belly band on a pocket, and two, I can do a flip pocket. So I have my envelope on a flip pocket. That's my idea book, lots of ideas, and to remind me that I have these, because I put these in a box on my shelf, and then I forget that they're there. So that's it for making them. For As for decorating them, um, you can decorate them however you want. You can leave them completely plain and not put anything on them. You can decorate the back and not the front, or you can decorate the back and the front. Um, this one, I just put a little belief thingy on there and a little ticket. Um, I'm left these mostly undecorated just a little bit of decoration on them because I don't know how I'm going to use them yet. I don't know what journal they might go into. This one I did the front and the back. And I've already put a card in there that's going to live in there. So, you know, there's you do what you need to do. This one just has a little bit on it, front and back. This one has nothing on it. So look at all of the different things that you can do with these. You can make these so many different ways, and they are easy. How long did that take us? Very, very little time. You can use a, cut down a 12 by 12. You can cut down uh, an, an 8 by, 8.5 by 11. You can really do it, and you can make them any size. You can make them 4 inches. You can make them 5 inches, 6 inches. 3 inches might be a little bit small, because um, you're not going to be able to put much in the pocket. And um, I wouldn't go to the, personally, I won't go to the eight inches because they won't fit in my journals. I, if you're doing a larger journal or a folio of some sort that's really big, there's no reason you couldn't go with an eight inch or even a seven inch, whatever. All right. So that's it for today. If you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and click like to let YouTube and me know that you are enjoying them. And click the bell if you want notifications as to when the next video comes out. In the meantime, have a great week on this Maker Monday. And I will see you soon. This is Cindy, signing off.